Listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness Prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Join us for our weekly broadcast His Abounding Grace with Minister Vanessa Williams. That's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. On Wednesday afternoons at 1 p.m., join Reverend Gwendolyn Dixon for the Midday Glory Prayer Line. The dial-in number is 641-715-3580. The access code is 732-499. And Wednesday night at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Reverend Pat Randall for Declaring the Finished Work for an hour of worship, exhortation, and prayer. Reverend Ray and friends are here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life for a Word in Season. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. First Mondays of every month at 7 p.m., be blessed with the teaching ministry of Apostle Shirley Jones on Lifeline. On third Mondays at 7 p.m., join Evangelist Louis McElwain for Adoration, a broadcast of worship and ministries on the mission field. Second Saturdays of the month, join Reverend Curtis, Reverend Novena, and Minister Jordana for Bold and Beautiful, a youth and young adult broadcast setting the world on fire with the love of Jesus. All broadcast times are Eastern Standard Time. Hey family, we are excited to have two new broadcasts added to the When Christians Speak Talk Radio Network. Marriage Takeover, The Body of One. Hosted by Reverend Eric and Reverend Tamika Thompson, it airs every third Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our hosts cover a wide range of topics to help build stronger marriages. They leave nothing off the table. Our newest broadcast, R3, Real Life, Real Men, Real Talk, premieres Sunday, October 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and will air every second Sunday of the month. Our hosts, Elston Green, Cleophas Malone, Antonio Mitchell, and Ray Rose, will create a space by men and for men to have real conversations. It's time to be free, men, from false standards and the expectations of society, family, and self. So don't forget, that's every second Sunday of the month at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. R to the third power. Real life, real men, real talk. When 
Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry. We are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. As a 501c3 nonprofit ministry, all of your gifts are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com. God bless you. Father, we thank you for every word that proceeds out of your mouth. We know that we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. We thank you, Lord God, that you are continuously speaking to us. That is your desire that we would know what you know. That you would love us so much and care so much about our destiny that you would send your son knowing that he would go through a brutal death to secure man's destiny. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Father. We glorify your name. We thank you for this message today. We thank you that we will continue to grow in the knowledge and the wisdom from from heaven as we continue to be shaped and molded by your hand we humbly submit ourselves under your mighty hand do what is needed to help us to grow to help us to move into a place that we know without a doubt that you love us and that it is an everlasting love. And that it is a perfect love. And we thank you for this. And we thank you for your anointing on this word that will go forth today in the broadcast. That it will go forth and accomplish this perfect purpose that you have for it. It surely will not return to you void. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your loving kindness. And it's in Christ Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Well, we are continuing on our journey in the message titled, Resting in Your Helplessness. This is part two. So this second part actually has a subtitle. And that subtitle is Self-Confident or God-Confident. Self-Confident or God-Confident. This is part two of Resting in Your Helplessness. And as I said last week, it is a strange thing for us to rest in the midst of a helpless situation or when we're feeling helpless. To find rest in that, it contradicts the ideology of this world. In this world, we are told that we need to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps, that we are the captain of our ship, that we are defined by what we accomplish, that it is a mark of success to say that you are a self-made man, 
We live in a climate where there's thousands of self-help books teaching you how to succeed, how to make money, how to be happy, how to enjoy life, just how to live. There's some self, self-help self book uh, to uh, give you a, um, a quickie study on how to have a fuller life. But this ideology, this type of thinking, being the captain of your own ship and pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, being a self-made man, all of this represents man acting independent of God. That independent spirit that entered when man succumbed to the deception of Satan. And this same plan is still in force by the enemy to perpetuate this lie in our lives that we can actually be fulfilled and successful, independent of God. I'm going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. It says, this is God speaking the Lord he's speaking he's saying to Paul in his his time of weakness amen my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness Romans 5 6 through just verse 6 excuse me Romans 5 verse 6 it says for while we man us while we were still weak at the right time that God appointed time hallelujah Christ died for the ungodly Christ died for us while we were still weak we didn't achieve some place of strength but mankind was was in its weakness when Christ died this word weakness, the Greek, in the Greek language, the definition of it encompasses um, the state of your soul, referencing um, a lack of strength or the capacity to understand a thing, uh, an inability to do things that are great and glorious. Your inability to restrain yourself from corrupt desires or be able to bear under trials or troubles. And in regard to your physical body, it means a physical weakness or frailty, uh, decreasing in health or a sickness. And man was in this state. He, in his soul, There was this weakness. And even in his physical body, that body that originally was not designed to die, suffered under this curse that caused it to decrease in health, at times to be weak and frail, or to be exposed to sickness. All because of the fall, man acting independent of God. We make decisions about our fate As if we can see into tomorrow. This is what James chapter 4 says. I'm going to read verses 13 and 14. Come now you who say. Today and tomorrow we will go into such and such a town. And spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. That's that self-confident spirit. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And and by next year, I'll have this. And I've got my five-year plan in five years. I'll have my master's in five years. I'll have this. I'll have that. I'll have my boat. I'll have my house. That's what we do. Yet we do not know what tomorrow will bring. But this is what the Lord says to us. Him loving us. Him being rich in his loving kindness towards us. Merciful. Isaiah 48, 17. This is the heart of God speaking. He says, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit 
who leads you in the way you should go. I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. That there is no need for us to live in that place of self-confidence or independence. But we can be confident in God, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has said to us that he will teach us to profit and lead us in the way that we should go. And this way that he is leading us is the way of our highest good. So when we begin to accept and recognize our helplessness, especially when we're in the midst of it because we get um, desperate and we make all kinds of, of, of decisions because we don't want to stay in this place of helplessness because it's not comfortable for us. But once we learn to rest in God in that place of helplessness, when we begin to trust And to know that he is there. That he will keep us. He will keep us. Because he's faithful. This leads to freedom. Freedom from self-confidence into the awesome power of being God-confident. With God, nothing is impossible. This journey that we're on is, it's a journey of faith. It's, it's all about w- what we believe. For by grace we have been saved, not by works. No man can boast about it. Christ Jesus has done it by, by, by the way of the cross, through his death, burial, and resurrection. He has accomplished this place of rest. That we can walk by faith and not by sight. Walking in a God confidence. What we believe will determine how we live. And what we believe comes out of our hearts. We are encouraged and admonished through the scriptures to grow in grace and knowledge. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18 says... But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grow in the grace. This grace, this is something that is bestowed upon us. It's God's favor. It's his loving kindness. It's his mercy that is bestowed upon us. Not earned, not performed for. And this knowledge that we are being urged to grow in, this is a divine knowledge. It's a deeper and a more perfect knowledge. This is the knowledge that only comes from God. When we are operating independent of God in our self-confidence, we are relying on limited knowledge we're relying on man's intellect which is so vastly different from God's thinking the mind of Christ he says his 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 thoughts as 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 far uh as the heavens are from the earth that's the difference the the space between if you can even calculate that the space between how we think and how he thinks but he is giving us this wisdom and this knowledge we can grow in this by resting in him that place of a Abiding in him gives us access, access because we're trusting. We're trusting even in our place of weakness, uh, in our place of helplessness. Philippians 1.9 says, And it is my prayer that your love, and that love is agape love, God's love, And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more 
the love of God abounding more and more in our lives with knowledge and all discernment. So this God's love abounding more and more with knowledge, this knowledge that comes from God, this divine intelligence and all discernment. And discernment is just judgment, perception, mental discernment. But of course, we're talking about the mind of God, the mind of Christ. Ephesians 1, starting in verse 16, says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, this is Paul speaking, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. Um, let me pause right here. It speaks of this spirit of wisdom back in Genesis when um, um, Jubal, the first musician, this uh, God would uh, send a spirit of wisdom. And he was the one who developed the musical instruments. The spirit of wisdom came upon men in the Old Testament that gave them the, the, the knowledge and the understanding and the know-how to become artists, to, to, to build statues and to construct buildings. It was God's spirit of wisdom and of revelation. Let me continue the scripture may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. It is really all about not, you know, we want to gain a lot of knowledge in about a lot of different things, but the knowledge that's going to really, really change our lives is the knowledge of him. The knowledge of our Father, the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 18 goes on to say, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened. Our hearts have eyes, have the ability to see, see, amen. And this enlightenment is, it means, um, Give light, understanding, to illumine, to imbue, which is to infuse, to steep, to ingrain. So when we grow by the spirit of wisdom and of this revelation in the knowledge of our Father and our Lord, that there's this light that comes into our hearts open so that we might see so that we might see it illumines and it actually infuses our very being hallelujah the eyes of our hearts that's the place of knowing which is why we have to guard our hearts we have to guard our hearts and Part of this great revelation, amen, is the great knowing that we are one with God. We are never, ever separated from him. Never separated from him. Never, never. We are one with God. He has placed us in Christ, and Christ is in him, even though... We talk about the three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They are inseparable. They are not like um, a family with siblings and a mother or father and, and the brothers and the sisters, well, you know, separate individuals. They are one. So when the Holy Spirit is present, the Father is present, our, the Son is present because they are all one. But now we are one with him. Jesus has made that possible. That spirit of independence has been broken over our lives so that now we can see 
that we are not separated from him. And it's because of Jesus. It's because of this great work. He destroyed the body of sin on the cross. All sin is is, 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 is acting independently of God. Acting according to your own thinking and your what you consider is moral. Because we can never achieve the purity and the holiness of God apart from him. He gives us this purity. He gives us this holiness. He is our righteousness. You know, being independently, spiritually, is difficult to recognize at times. Because in the church environment, we learn spiritually strategies for spiritual growth and natural growth and prosperity in our lives and our relationships and and we um it's 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 about practical uh christianity um and it's not that there's anything wrong with any of this there's nothing wrong with with praying there's nothing wrong with fasting i mean but Recognize that God doesn't need that. He doesn't need that. He's not really requiring that of you. But it is good for us in the sense that it's like, you know, you wash your face, you brush your teeth. It's to your advantage to clean your face and to brush your teeth. It's for you. And... As a result of it, you know, we have all of this, this knowledge of the word of God. You know, it's wonderful that we have these Bible believing, Bible teaching uh, churches, but we grab hold of this knowledge and we try to run with it. And we don't realize that we're running with it because we're not really waiting on God because we think we know. We think we know just because we've taken classes, we've been going to Bible studies, we think we know. And because we think we know, we can walk independently of God in things that are spiritual things. I recently went to see the movie The Shack. And I know people have varying um, opinions and and things about this book um, that's been turned into a movie. But I love the way the central character, Mac, interacts with um, this woman who represents, she's representing the father. Um, Then there is... um, the man that's representing Jesus and then this Asian woman who's representing the Holy Spirit and how they're interacting. But it gives us a visual of how God is interacting with us. He's these three persons, but they still move as one. Well, anyway, what I really want to talk about is the scene in the shack where, well, um, just prior to this scene, Mac and Jesus were walking on the water and they were, in fact, they walked on it and they ran across this, this huge lake. And so now Mac has had this experience. And so he and Jesus are standing by the lake at the shore and he looks out, Mac looks out at the water, and he steps into the water to walk on the water, and his feet goes under, and the water begins to cover. And then he looks back at Jesus, and Jesus says to him, we are meant to do it together. That's key. We are meant to live this life with God together, moving as one. We were meant to do it together. I thought this was just so, so powerful because that independent spirit will follow us into the body of Christ, which is why I believe there um, 
it talks about the body. Uh, it uses the analogy of the physical body, arms and hands and feet, and how they need to work together, and one is no no more important than the other. But when we come into the, when we maintain that independent spirit in the body of Christ, we are, the body is fragmented because we're not moving as one. So we want to get to this place where we know nothing and we're completely helpless. And so we look completely to the Lord to do whatever that needs to be done in us and through us. You know, I'm looking at our present day environment. What is going on here? The division that's going on in our nation and the culture of of our nation. Because what we don't seem to recognize is... uh, we have bought into this uh, this greatness, you know, America, the greatest. You know, we've been uh, trendsetters in the world and 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 the, a world leader, and and um, and and we we've we've forgotten that we didn't do this apart. This anything that we achieve that is positive and lasting comes from God. God afforded us to step into that position, but in our arrogance and in this self-confident spirit that we bought into, it's all about the nation being great as opposed to God being great in our nation that is what will make a nation great god being great in that nation moving from self confident to god confident hallelujah glory to god last week i had started sharing uh part of a a testimony um, in a crucial part of my my life. It was I was 39 years old. I was still young in my faith, still growing in it and learning. And my husband suddenly took ill, and things moved rather rapidly. But uh, in terms of the 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 degree uh, <clears throat> that this illness had impacted his life that it sent him into a coma and paralyzed him and and this is all within a matter of like uh within 30 days he's gone from this vibrant man to this man laying up in the hospital can't breathe for himself and semi in a semi coma state and in this uh time i i was sharing that uh, God gave me this scripture uh, out of James, p- letting patience have its perfect work. And, you know, when we're in that place of, of feeling helpless, uh, that's where we need the patience uh, to lo- allow patience to have its perfect work because we need to be mature children of God, lacking anything. And I shared that when I first uh, was given this scripture, I just it was just overwhelming i i i i was like what counted all joy uh when you're faced with uh various trials and and temptations and 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 tr- it's trying it's trying of your faith and and it's working patience and let patience have her perfect work i thought it was interesting that it um it's female, this word, and it refers to her per- patience is referred to as a her, but, you know, we won't get into that right now. Um, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So here I am in this circumstance, in a time when things were going great uh, 
in our marriage and we were about to embark in 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 our our ministry part of our business and so it was a good time for us but then all of a sudden I'm transported out into the middle of this great ocean I would be fine I could swim as long as I was near the shore but this trial was so so immense that I felt that I had been pushed out into the midst of this ocean. This place where where I, I was just, I couldn't see, I, I couldn't even see the shoreline. It was like this tidal wave came in and just carried me out. A place of total hopelessness. This is what I discovered while I was out there. In that place of total helplessness. That God was with me. God was with me in the middle of that ocean. This vast ocean that was overwhelming me. And I saw no way out. By his spirit he introduced worship and praise into my life. And the reading of the word. And it's so interesting how he, he orchestrated all of this to come to pass. I can't even say, well, I, you know, because of what I did, God was really doing this because I was helpless. But I was given a, a VHS during the time when, before DVDs, a VHS of a, um, of a worship service with Ron, Ron Cannoli and this choir and this praise team. And I would listen to it every day. And that's how I learned to worship by learning those songs and worshiping with this tape. And I was reading my Bible. I was really reading my Bible now because what I would do was sit by my husband's bedside because he couldn't speak. He was paralyzed from the neck down. And I would read the scriptures to him. Most of the time when he was lying there because he was in this sort of semi coma state, semi conscious. Um, most of the time his eyes were closed, but there were some times when I would read the scriptures where he would open his eyes and look at me and the clarity of his focus, it would sometimes it would just over overwhelm me because I couldn't believe it because usually, you know, he didn't have that kind of a focus. But that's just how powerful the word of God was. But even though I was going through this, going through the worship and the praise, and I'd have these great moments of of revelation and I shared also that I was having dreams and visions in fact that's how I got the scripture um and James was through um a dream but fear was always at the edge threatening to take me over but I had to let go I had to let go I had to let go because I couldn't hold myself together. I was trying to hold myself together, but basically it really wasn't working. I had to just let go. And the Lord just beautifully, beautifully assured me that he had me, that he had me. And during this time, I received help in major ways because there were so many things that were needed during this time. You know, I was still raising a, a child and I even had, uh, I was caring for a niece as, as well. And she was like about f five years old. And, um, and not only that, uh, financially, because he was in the hospital for almost nine months and he was never on a regular ward. So the, the medical bills were immense. But I'm telling you, all of this was taken care of. I didn't even pray for it, but God took care of all of that. I did not have to pay one dollar. He was in a private hospital in my place of helplessness. And sometimes when I think I'm in a situation where I'm feeling a little overwhelmed, with, but it's nothing in comparison to that situation that I remember, I remember that he held me in his hand. It was also a time where I learned, because 
I was believing God for my husband being healed. And I was standing on scriptures and praying and, you know, and while I was at the hospital, I would pray for other patients that, that were there. And I would come back some days and they would be gone. And I'd ask the nurse and she said, oh, they got better and they've, they've gone home. They've been released. And I'm thinking like, okay, I'm praying for these people. They're getting healed. They're going home. But my husband's still laying up here. But... I had that final revelation when the Lord spoke to me and said that the only reason your husband is remaining here on this side is for you because you're holding on to him. And so when I released him, he was able to move on peacefully and make that transition. What I'm saying here is that being helpless, it's not a terrible thing. Not if you're saved. If you're helpless and you're in the world, you may, uh, you know, you, uh, it may not be so great for you. I'll just say that. But if you know the Lord and you're in that place of helplessness, that is when His power in your life is made perfect. When you can no longer do anything to change your circumstances, he comes in in all of his power and all of his glory. And he shows himself. He reveals himself to you. He's the good father. He's the loving father. Father, full of loving kindness and mercy. And he's near. He's always near. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to stop here. Um, I'll, I, I have one more segment. I, I believe there's one more segment to this message. And I'll come back next week uh, with it. But I want to stop here and just pray for those who are listening to this broadcast live or listening to the podcast later. It really doesn't matter when. Because whenever you listen, it's the appointed time. Father, I thank you right now that you are showing yourself faithful to this listener that right now by your spirit their heart is being strengthened in their inner man that you are encouraging them giving them infusing them with courage that comes from you you're moving them from a place of self-confident To God confident. I thank you Lord God. That your word has gone forth. And that. It is accomplishing the very purposes. For which which it has been sent. I thank you for great breakthroughs Lord God. I thank you for great healings Father God. Great healing. In the name of Jesus. And now, Lord, for those who may not know you, God, but they're listening to this message. For some reason, you've drawn them to this message. I thank you, Father God, that their eyes are open, that they see you for who you are, this loving Father that sent his son not to judge, not to condemn, but to save. I thank you that they receive the forgiveness of sin, for they have been forgiven. But I thank you that they receive it right now, that they ask your dear son, Jesus Christ, to come into their hearts, to fill their lives, to take control. And I thank you, Lord God, that 
that they will be patient with themselves as you continue to reveal yourself to them through your word, through their fellowship with other believers. I thank you for accelerated growth in this season. These are dark times. So I thank you for accelerated growth, Lord God. Give them visions and dreams, Lord God. And I praise you for that. I thank you. I glorify your name. And it's in Christ Jesus' name that I pray. Amen and amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace turn your eyes upon Jesus look full in his wonderful face and the thing of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Praise God and bless his holy name. Thanks for joining me during this hour of Declaring the Finished Work. This is your host, Pat Randall. I'll be back next week with part three of Resting in Your Helplessness. I want to remind you to stay tuned tomorrow night for Friday Night Joy with Reverend Ray. And then on Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life. God bless you. Keep moving forward in the, the goodness of the Lord and trusting in his faithfulness. Amen. Love you. <music>